Crystal Joy and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an actress, writer, and founder of Blue Room Productions. I post vlogs, behind the scenes commentary on my projects, and my films. But before this video was over, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and the bell button to stay up to date. So in 2018, I went to Ghana and it was such a, an incredible experience because it was my first time on the continent. And the I had only experienced Africa through the eyes of television and media. And we all know that Western society doesn't always get it right. They don't get it right with a lot of things. It was a dream of mine to go and here I was there enjoying it. The party scene in Ghana is lit. But I just remember going to the parties and seeing so many beautiful black people and feeling so appreciative and loving being black, loving my skin color, loving just who I am as a black woman. Because here in the States, they will remind you that your color is a weapon. And I just remember feeling so beautiful and just thankful that I'm there to experience black people in this way. interesting at these parties was that they listened to a lot of 90s music to get the party started when I'm trying to like kick it 90s music is not my genre of choice I prefer to listen to something ratchet the thing is the best time in my opinion to go to Ghana is during the holidays because everyone goes home everyone from different parts of the world that's from Ghana goes home Ghana was packed and the thing is, I don't know how it is any other time of the year, so I can't compare it to anything. But man, in December and January, it was a lot of people. There was parties all the time. Parties all the time. And I tried to go to as many as I could. <laughs> there are beautiful people in Ghana, let me tell you. Kokro Beat Garden. I probably butchered it, my bad. <laughs> Kokro Beat Gardens was this beautiful place. It was a beach, it had this resort. I was at this place because I was taking pictures for my Instagram script series nights and the photographer had took us there. It was a beautiful place and I thought to myself, why don't they show this on TV? It literally looked like a paradise to me. It was gorgeous. I went to the McCullough Market and I went to the Art Center. And the way they're set up is they're individual vendors. They're either selling on the street, on the table, or they're inside of like this store kind of like and they just sell so many different items some of them do sell some of the same things but you can actually negotiate prices um but uh, they were both i don't even it, it's so hard to describe the experiences and how eventful it was you know I don't have a lot of footage for the Macola market because I almost got my phone snatched. <laughs> this lady 
I'm taking a picture or trying to take a picture and all of a sudden I get this woman screaming, why are you taking pictures of us? Why are you taking pictures of us? And I look around and people are looking at me and something just said, put your phone away. So I just put my phone away because I just had this weird gut feeling like they're gonna snatch your phone. So I put my phone away and I apologize. I didn't want her to think I was trying to invade her privacy. I was trying to capture the moment. But you have all of these people selling different types of things, clothes, spices, food, shoes, purses, bags. I actually got all of my souvenirs from the markets, but that was fun. It was hectic. I mean, you have people carrying things, pushing things, moving things around, and you can easily get caught up or get like be in the way so you have to pay attention to your you just because it's it's a very crowded space especially the Macola market I bought so many cool things from these markets my Africa chain that you see me wearing all the time I got it at the Macola market and I actually bought a few people Africa chains but that's actually one of my favorite pieces of jewelry because the US dollar really stretches there I was able to spend gloriously <laughs> and buy all types of stuff. I went back home with so many different things. But what was so interesting about the markets in Ghana was that they were majority and mainly run by women. I rarely saw a man at the market as a vendor. And I know there is a reason behind that. Um, I have looked that up. I can't remember the exact reason. To see women running things and negotiating and just out there making their money and doing their thing, I thought that was a really beautiful thing to see. So that was that. Oh, uh -huh. so I was leaving the art center and I got in my cab. I remember looking up at the sky and seeing a lot of birds and I said, wow, that's a lot of birds because it was a swarm of them. And the driver says, those are not birds, those are bats. I've ever seen I mean the bats weren't super close to me but when I looked and I'm like you're joking he was like no those are bats and I look they were bats bats fly around in the daylight like bats don't just come out at night I had never experienced bats like that before but that was pretty interesting. Coachella in Ghana was lit. It was it was a lot of fun. So I don't unfortunately have a lot of footage because I was just trying to enjoy the moment. I I just wanted to have a good time and I didn't want to carry my phone so much. I did get some things, but I had a lot of fun. And let me tell you, the mosquitoes are real in Ghana, okay? They got a bite of this. I was half naked, cause it was so hot. Went and told all their little friends and their cousins, cause they came for me. They bit me up. I remember leaving the Macola Market and my taxify driver was about 10, 15 minutes away. So I start walking in the direction that he's gonna pick me up at. And I remember as I was walking, I kind of stopped to look at the street vendor. 
And I remember seeing this gentleman, he was carrying something on his head and he stopped me. We just started talking and I remember looking at him and he had the most beautiful eyes. His eyes were gorgeous. And I told him, I said, you have beautiful eyes. And he was like, thank you. And then says, I want your skin. And when he said it, it stunned me because no one had ever said that to me before. I have never been told by anyone in my life, I want your skin. Living in the States, people have a way of making you feel like because of what you look like, you're not good enough. We've seen it play out on television. You know, black people are targets here in the States. And a lot of black people are used as target practice. So when I heard him say that to me, it was completely off guard. And even though I knew why he was saying that, I wanted to hear his explanation for why he felt that way. And he said, in this country, if I had your skin color, I would be treated like a celebrity. As he was talking, there was a group of women who were walking past, pointing their finger at me, smiling and waving. Now, I didn't know who, this, who these women were. And he said, look, do you see how they're looking at you? Do you see how they're pointing at you? Do you see how they're looking at you like you're really special? And I couldn't even argue with him. He was like, that's exactly why I want your skin. And so in that moment, I did try to encourage him and uplift him, but it didn't work. It made me feel sad for him. In Ghana, I would see a lot of billboards for skin bleaching. And that's honestly nothing new under the sun. When I was living in New York, I would see a lot of women, black women, you could tell they bleached their skin because their knuckles would be black and underneath their eyes would be black but their skin was a different complexion. So you knew that they were skin bleaching. And like I said, I have never been told to my face or by anyone that they wanted my skin, never. I was the only African-American girl in my class. Everyone else was white. So I was always bullied, always teased, always made to feel ugly, always isolated and and singled out of things. So when he said that to me, I didn't really know how to take it. I was just taken aback. So I went to Elmina Castle and Elmina Castle was one of the routes on the Atlantic slave trade. And when I went there, I was able to go on a tour. It was a group of us. And when, as, as they're taking you through the different passages and pathways, you look and you see, you know, male only, women only, and it was really deep, you know? It was, it was, that was a, that was a real moment because here I am standing on the very ground that slaves stood, my ancestors stood and it was very dark it was hard it was cold there was no light there was this one particular room that he put us in and when you look up it had a skeleton with a cross if i can remember correctly that if 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 you had to go in this room you never made it out because you were considered a troublemaker. So all troublemakers went in this particular room and that is where they were left to die. And I remember our tour guide left us in there for about a few minutes or so because he wanted us to understand what it felt like to be there. And even though he only left us there for a few moments, that's when it became real to me. Like, you were put in this room and you're never gonna leave. This is where you're gonna die. And then there was the door of no return. And the door of no return is this dungeon doorway that led hundreds of thousands of 
enslaved Africans to these ships to go to the Caribbeans, North America, South America to never return. And being that I have so many friends that are from the diaspora, it has only encouraged me to continue exploring the continent and wanting to know more, wanting to understand more. This is the thing. I have a really easy time adapting to new environments. And that's because I have a love for other cultures. I have a very curious mind and very open-minded and I appreciate the fact and understand the fact that when you go to another country, you're essentially going to someone else's home. Would you disrespect another person's home? Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you next week.